Hello everyone. This is Dr. Hussal Fadl, the course coordinator of Accounting 112. In this video, I'm going to explain Chapter 4, Part 1. Chapter 4 title is Completing the Accounting Cycle. This is also one of the important chapter that you have to focus on. The first learning objective of this chapter is to prepare a worksheet and explain its usefulness. What are the benefits of a worksheet? So we already learned in chapter three how to prepare a worksheet. And you have to remember that the worksheet, it's not a required report. It's just to draft the company prepare it in an Excel sheet in order to help them to prepare a financial statement. And one of the benefits of the worksheet, it will reduce the risk of errors, and it will also link the accounts and their adjustments, and it will help us also to prepare the interim financial statements, and as well, it will help us to see the effect of the transaction of each account. Remember, this is not a financial statement, it's just a draft prepared by the company. In order to prepare a worksheet, we have five steps. The first step, we have to enter the unadjusted trial balance that we learned how to do it in chapter two. And then in step two, we need to enter the adjustment entries that we learned in chapter three. And in step three, we need to prepare the adjusted trial balance that also we learned how to prepare it in chapter three. Step four, we need to sort the adjusted trial balance and we need to prepare the amounts for the financial statements. Step five, we need to have the total st statement columns and we have to compute the income or loss and the balance column. We already did this in chapter three, so I'm just going to go over it quickly. So this is the worksheet and this is the unadjusted trial balance where all of the accounts are listed but without any adjustment. After preparing the adjustment entries that we learned already in chapter three, we need to insert all of the adjusting entries in this adjustment column. The third step, we need to prepare the adjusted trial balance that we already learned how to do it in chapter three. After preparing the adjusted trial balance, now we can use all of the numbers inside the adjusted trial balance to prepare the income statement and balance sheet and statements of owner's equity. So if you remember here that the income statement will only include revenues and expenses. So I'm going to take all of the revenues and expenses from the adjusted trial balance and then prepare the income statement. To prepare the balance sheet and the statements of owner's equity, I need to add all of the assets and liabilities and equity as well in order to prepare what we call it balance sheet. The second objective of the chapter is to explain why temporary accounts are closed each period. In accounting, we have two types of accounts, temporary accounts and permanent account. Let's talk first about the temporary accounts. The temporary accounts includes revenues, expenses, withdrawals, and income summary. Why do we call them temporary accounts? Because we usually use them at the beginning of the period and when we end the year, we need to close them. For example, the expenses of the year 2019, I cannot take the expenses to 2020 because each year has a different type of expenses. The same comes to the revenues. I cannot take the revenues with me to the next year because each year has a different revenue. 
So the revenue of 2019, I cannot take it with me to 2020. I have to close it in 2019 because each year has a different revenue. The same goes to the withdrawals. Withdrawals, every year I'm going to have a different withdrawals. So it means that this is a temporary account. I need to close it by the end of the year. I cannot take the amount to the year after. But when it comes to the permanent account, we have assets, liabilities, and owner's capital as a permanent account, which means that I can take the ending balance of the asset and liabilities and owner capital, I can carry them to the year after. So if I have a balance of asset in 2019, because the asset is a permanent account, I'm going to take the balance of 2019, I'm going to take it to, 20, to the year 2020. The same is with the liability. The balance of the liability at the end of 2019, I'm going to take the liability and I'm going to carry it to the next year. But for the temporary accounts, I cannot take their balances and carry them to the next year because each year has a different revenues, different withdrawals, and different expenses. That's why I need to close them at the end of the year. So every end of the year, I need to close the expenses, revenues, and withdrawal, and also something we call it income summary, that we'll learn more about what does it mean. As I said earlier, that we only do a closing entries for the temporary accounts. The temporary account includes revenues, expenses, withdrawals, and income summary. So we need to close those four accounts every end of a year. To prepare the closing entry, the closing process has three steps. The first step is to identify the accounts for a closing. Second, we need to record and post the closing entries. The third step, we need to prepare post-closing trial balance. The third learning objective in this chapter is to describe and prepare closing entries. Remember, when you are going to prepare closing entries, you are only going to close the temporary accounts, which is revenues, expenses, withdrawal, and income summary. To prepare and record the closing entries, you need to follow the four steps in order. You have to prepare the closing entry in order. First, you need to close the credit balance and revenue accounts to income summary. Second step, you need to close the debit balance and expense accounts to income summary. The third step, you need to close income summary accounts to owner's capital. And the fourth and last step is to close the withdrawals to owner's capital. Remember, you have to record the closing entries in this order. As I mentioned earlier, that we have four temporary accounts, revenues, expenses, income summary, and withdrawals. And we need to close those temporary accounts at the end of each year. And we said that to record the closing entry first, we need to close the revenues account. Remember, the first step is we need to close the revenues accounts. If you can see in the adjusting trial balance, we have two revenues. We have consulting revenues, which is 7,850 on the credit side. And we have rental revenue, which is 300 is on the credit side. So now revenue normal balance is credit. If you are going to close the revenues account, you need to record them on the debit side. Why we need to record them on the debit side? Because I want the revenue account to be zero. So the normal balance of revenue is credit, but if I'm going to record the closing entry, I'm going to close the revenue on the debit side. And on the credit side, I'm going to use income summary. Income summary, it's account used to close revenues and expenses. 
and I'm going to record the income summary on the credit side with 8,150. How did I get 8,150, which is I took 7,850, which is the consulting revenue, plus the rental revenue 300, which will give me 8,150. Remember, because the revenue normal balance is credit, when I'm going to close it, I'm going to record it on the debit side, on the opposite side. The second step is to close the expenses. Remember, you have to do the closing entry in, in order. First, as we saw previously, we need to close the revenue. Now, the second step is I'm going to close the expenses. Now, as you can see that we have a depreciation expense and it's 375 on the debit side. We have salaries expense and it's 1610. We have insurance expense and it's 100 on the debit side. And I have rent expense and it is 1000 on the debit side. And I have supplies expense and it's 1050 on the debit side. And I have utilities expense and it is 200 and 30. So basically I have six types of expenses. The expenses normal balance is debit. If I want to close them to make their balances zero, I have to record them on the credit side. So what is the closing entry for the expense account? It is income summary on the debit. Then on the credit side, I'm going to list all of my six type of expenses. Why the expenses are on the credit side? Because in the trial balance, the expenses was on the debit side, which is the normal balance. When I'm going to close them, I'm going to close them on the other side. If the normal balance here, the debit is normal balance of the expenses, it means when I'm going to close it, I'm going to close it on the credit side. And what will be on the debit side? Income summary. Remember, income summary, it's an account that we use it to close revenues and expenses. The income summary here shows in the closing entry, it is 4,365. How did I come with 4,365? Well, it's the total expenses. So if I add 375 plus 1,610 plus 100 plus 1,000 plus 150 plus 230, it will give me 4,000. 365. Now we're going to move to the third step. We need to close the income summary to capital. When we're going to close the income summary account, we need to prepare the closing entry as following. We're going to say income summary to capital. And we said here the income summary on the debit side with 3,785 and capital on the credit side with 3,785. So from where did I get the 3,785? If you go to the adjusted trial balance, there is no income summary. Then from where did I come up with the 3,785? Well, you have to remember there is two steps in order to calculate the number that you are going to close the income summary with. I'm going to take the income summary of the revenue minus the income summary of the expenses and it will give me 3,785. So remember, when you're going to close the income summary, you're always going to close it to the capital account. It's always income summary to capital. How you are going to calculate the amount of the closing entry? You need to take the income summary of the revenue, which is here 8,150, minus the income summary of the expense, which is 4,365. And it will give me 3,785. So this number is going to be inside the closing entry of the income summary. Remember, when you're going to close the income summary, it's always income summary to capital. Remember here, you have to focus. When you are going to close the income summary to capital, 
you need to check if the income summary of the revenue, which is here in this example, 3,350, and the income summary of the expenses is 4,365. So my income summary of the revenue is less than the income summary of the expenses. So when I deduct 3,350 minus 4,365, I'm going to get here minus 1,015. If you get the answer minus, then when you are going to close the income summary, you are going to record the closing entry as capital to income summary, not income summary to capital. Remember, if the total was in minus, then you have to record it capital to income summary. This is very important. Please pay attention. The last closing entry you have to prepare, which is the to close the withdrawal accounts. If you go and see in the adjusting trial balance, you're going to see that we have a withdrawal of 200 on the debit side. So when we are going to close the withdrawal, the withdrawal normal balance is debit. If you want to close it, you're going to close it to the credit side. So you're going to say capital to withdrawal 200, 200. Why I did not put income summary? I write capital because remember in step three, I closed the income summary, so I cannot use it anymore. So that's why I'm gonna say capital to withdrawals. Why withdrawals on the credit side? Because the normal balance of the withdrawal is debit. If I want to close it, I have to take it to the credit side. Remember, withdrawals is the last account to be closed when you are preparing the closing entries. The fourth learning objective in this chapter is to explain and prepare a post-closing trial balance. After all four of our closing entries have been made, we prepare a post-closing trial balance or after closing entries trial balance. And the post-closing trial balance is a list of permanent accounts and their balances after all closing entries have been journalized and posted. It lists the balances for all accounts not closed. These accounts comprise the company assets, liabilities, and equity, which are identical to those in the balance sheet. A post-closing trial balance verifies that the total debit equals to the total credits for the permanent account, and all temporary accounts have zero balances. The post-trial balance usually is the last step in the accounting process. Now, before preparing the post-closing trial balance, let us first remember the first step of the closing entries. In step one, we close the revenues account, and we said consulting revenue and rental revenue and the debit side to income summary. And because we close the revenue account, it means that I need to remove it from the trial balance because now the revenue is closed and their balances is zero. So I'm going to remove the consulting revenue and the rental revenue from the trial balance because they have zero balances. Then in step two, I need to close all of the expenses account and we learn how to do it by saying income summary and we're going to close all of the expenses on the credit side. Now all of the expenses accounts are zero. So now I need to remove them from the trial balance because I already closed them and I no longer have any balances for those expenses. In step three, we close the income summary account to capital and we said income summary to capital. And remember here, we calculated 3,785 by taking the income summary of the revenue minus the income summary of the expenses and then we get 3,785. In step four, we close the withdrawal accounts and when we close it, we set capital to withdrawals. And now I need to remove the withdrawals from the trial balance. Why? Because I already close it. Now you have to remember that capital, it's not 
a temporary account. It's a permanent account. So I cannot close it. I just need to adjust the balance of the capital and then I can carry it next year because it's uh, because it's permanent account. So I'm going to take the capital balance in the adjusted trial balance which is 30,000 on the credit side then I'm going to check now the closing entries do I have any capital yes in step 3 I have a capital and the capital was 3,785 and it was on the credit side and if it was on the credit side and the normal balance of the capital is already credit so I'm going to add it in step 4 I also have capital but the capital is on the debit side so it means that I have to reduce it. So 30,000 plus 3,785 minus 200, it's gonna give me the ending balance of the capital, which is 33,585. So I'm going to use this amount when I'm going to prepare the post-closing trial balance. Now this is the final look of the post-closing trial balance. As I said earlier in chapter three, that trial balance is not a financial statement. It's just a table that we prepared that will help us to prepare the financial statements. And you have to remember that trial balance, we are only going to include assets, liabilities, and equity. So I put all of the assets like cash, account receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, and accumulated depreciation, all of them on the debit side. Then I'm going, I'm going to add all of the accounts payable, salaries payable, unearned revenue, which is liabilities on the credit side. Then I'm going to add the capital. But remember, when you're going to prepare post-closing trial balance, the capital should be adjusted. So 3,000 or 33,585, this is the adjusted amount or balance of the capital after closing entry. And remember, this is a trial balance, so the total debit should be equal to the total credit. So the total debit here is 43,045, and the total credit is 43,045. If the total debit equals to the total credit, it means that you prepare the post -tri closing trial balance correctly and you close all of your temporary accounts correctly. This is the end of chapter 4, part 1.